right, you guys ready to cut your fabric for the Carly quilt? Um, there will be noises in the background. That's my daughter practicing her viola. My husband's reading to my son downstairs. So I waited for a moment when my house was quiet. This would never happen because I can count on one hand the number of times I've been alone in my house since the beginning of the pandemic. So it is always loud here. Um, I am going to cut my fabric. Um, I normally would stack fabric two at a time um, to cut it, but I'm cutting from my stash and there's gonna be pieces that are big like this. There's gonna be pieces that are small like this that have pieces missing. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna stack when I can, but because everything's kind of a different size, I'm gonna cut one at a time for the most part, just so that I make sure I don't end up with pieces that are missing corners or, you know. So the first thing that you wanna do, I've pressed my fabric already. So, you know, it's not totally flat, but it, all the main wrinkles are out there. That will help with, you cut your fabric straight. You'll get more accurate cuts if you press your fabric first and it will be easier. All right, I'm gonna fold my fabric into quarters because then I don't have to cut all the way up if my fabric were in half and you're much more likely to slip if you're cutting that longer distance. So I'm cutting it, I'm folding it into quarters and I'm gonna show you first using a regular long ruler. This is a Creative Grids eight and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. If you're gonna just have one ruler, I would say this is the one to have or one like it. Um, several brands make similar ones. I like Creative Grids because it's got textured dots that just are on the back, you can see them. So it helps it not slip. And I like this size, because a lot of times these long rulers are only six and a half inches long. And I really prefer the eight and a half inch, or or they're, or they're six inches. A lot of times they don't have the half inch, um, but that's how I like it. So I'm going to cut, and this is how I like to cut my fabric. You can do things differently, and that doesn't mean you're wrong. Um, I'm going to cut a strip of fabric, and I'm gonna cut extra so that I can trim the other side. Okay, so I'm using um, this safety rotary cutter because my old rotary cutter, um, the blade wouldn't go down all the way, so I switched to this one. Works pretty well. Um, you just, when you're cutting, it does this, and then when you're not cutting, it's covered. So I just cut a slightly longer than I needed, wider than I needed strip. I'm gonna flip it over, make sure it's everything is still lined up, and I'm gonna cut it down to size four inches right here. So now I have my strip. So I only need one. You can cut, you know, at least 10 squares from, from one and I only need six. So, so I've got my little cats here. Um, I'm gonna make sure that everything is lined up still. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to subcut. And my fabric is still cut in half, but it's not in quarters now. Um, that will just give me a little bit more. If I cut it, and if I left it folded in quarters and I cut squares here, then I would only have enough fabric to cut eight. And I only need to cut six, so it would be fine. But, you know, I like to keep the scrap piece as big as possible. So I'm gonna leave it folded in half. <laughs> my daughter's practicing her viola. So I cut a four inch square. Um, and when I cut, I line up the vertical line with the edge of the fabric and the horizontal line with the edge of the fabric and the vertical line with this edge of the fabric. So now I've cut off my selvage and I've got my squares. And what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna cut these in half, um, and this is where you're gonna wanna think about your fabric, if it's directional, which mine is. Um, the cats, you know, it can go, this is upside down or right side up, but if it's sideways, you'll tell the difference. So, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut them so I don't have to do it later. I'm gonna cut them along the diagonal. So when we sew these together, you will be sewing on the bias. As long as you're careful, it shouldn't cause any problems. And I'll show you how I pin mine to help prevent any stretching. Um, so that's how I would do it using this ruler, which I do not use for this type of project. I use 
my strobology ruler and I'm going to use that for the rest and it will be much faster. So this ruler is great because you trim and you cut without having to flip to move anything. So I have uh, there's horizontal lines here. I'm lining it up with the fold and then I'm going to make sure I have plenty of room to trim on the left side of this zero and I'm going to use I'm going to make it cut a four inch strip here. So I barely have enough, but I will have enough. So I just cut that squares up the left edge cut. Now I have my four inch strip um, and I'm going to trim that. So now I'm lining up this horizontal line with the edge of my fabric and then I'm going to um, cut every four inches along here. So I'll cut at zero to square up and then four, eight, and 12, and that will give me six squares. Zero, four, eight, and this, and this is pretty easy to use as long as you don't accidentally put your rotary cutter in the wrong slot, which of course I've done before. But if there's a mistake that can be made, I will find a way to make it. All right, I'm gonna set my scraps up here so that I can save those. And sometimes, um, for example, probably for both of those fabrics, because you guys know I love purple, I'll probably put them in my stash because I don't, purples are hard to find and I like these prints a lot. So I'll probably keep them with my stash because I could use them again.